You're gonna be a star, kid. You're gonna be a star. So I'm hanging out right now at uh, my dear friends Andrew and Faith Reed's house. And um, guys, you just gotta see. Well, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. It's just this gorgeous uh, backdrop here in beautiful San Diego. And just doing a little bit of masterminding, a little bit of um, sales calls, a little bit of just everything. And um, I'm going to be jumping on in just a moment with Fiora, who is a dear friend and who is just such a rock star standing for um, not given the sacrificial energy um, and the, the martyrdom that so many of us um, are raised in and to really building a life and a business um, around more of what you love. And so I'm super excited to be bringing her on and yeah, this is going to be fun. So here, here we go. So Theora has been a really dear friend. What's up, Dave Gieselman? Good to see you, brother. Um, Theora has been a really dear friend for, man, some time. Oh, and it looks like I'm going to invite her on. So here we are, Theora. There's also a baby. There's a baby named Ayanara here, too. So she may be uh, saying hi every once in a while. Theora, how do I invite you in? Theora, it says that you can't join the broadcast at this time. What the heck is going on? Theora, make sure you're on your phone and that it's sideways. And then hopefully all the magic will happen. Right on the magic school bus. But anyways, Theora is... Um, yeah, Theora and I know each other from a couple years ago. Theora... Sure, it says I can't bring you on the broadcast at this time, Theora. So make sure you have your mobile device, Theora, and then it is sideways, <laughs> and then we can get started. Um, but guys, so many conversations lately that I've been having um, around community, and something that I'm just super excited about around belonging. Dave Gieselman, you're somebody who I just really dearly, yes, Theora, she's got it, bring her on camera. And... Um, just really feeling a lot more community lately and it just feels really exciting um and i have some cool announcements coming up what's up jane goodall what's up sis good to see you girl and um yeah so today's gonna be really fun fiora is such a dear friend and she's uh just fantastic at what she does so it looks like she's connecting fiora oh why can't i hear you what is going on or what Theora? what's going on hello is it the headphones Oh. Hello, hello. I can hear you. I feel like my dad, right? No, my dad's better at technology than me. That was absurd. <laughs> there are, uh, first off, I just, before all the people start asking all the questions about how cool you are and things, I want to hear about the lights behind you. Oh, my twinkle lights that I always turn They're on. Ding, ding, ding. So good. Yeah. They're so good. This is my art gallery. The art gallery. Yeah. Guys, everybody, this is Theora's 10,698th interview. So I'm really excited to have her on board because she is an interviewing natural. So this is going to be just super lovely. Theora, um, first off, I'm just really excited. This feels like really sweet because you and I go back from when Alex and you and I were in Alex's, um, Alex Moscow's mastermind, which any of those of you who are into high ticket sales or interested in um, uh, learning more about uh, being able to really sell your services at a, at a higher level, talk to Alex, Mas Alex Moscow. He's just an absolute rock star. So, um, so with that, Theora, what's up? Happy Thursday. Thank you. Yeah, it's a good day for sure. It's a really good day. Yeah. I'm super excited. So you had some super cool concepts that I really wanted to talk about. And, and also you've been growing your brand and also your business and just also your being for a really long time. And so I, and I think a lot of people probably would see you maybe if they went to your website, which they absolutely should. Um, and we'll talk more about that. But um, if people were to see you now, they might be even a little intimidated because there's just so much cool stuff you've done um, over your time. And it's real guys, guys, she's the, one of the most woo woo and also the most like she used the word road warrior today and it's so true and i just freaking <laughs> love it like motorcycle jacket like just total badass and so what i would love to hear is a little bit more about your story theora like because i don't even think i fully know like really who like what brought you to this point in the life oh yeah um ooh. Long version or short version? I mean, I'll do the short version. Um, I, I, like, I don't care about, like, 
Yeah, I, I was definitely a bleeding oh. heart. Um, beautifully so in high school and uh, really wanted to do international um, community development work and did that immediately after college. And oh, that's my dog yeah. who really wants attention. I'm so sad. He's also wearing a cone. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's a little bit about what's going on. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So I, community development, that was um, what I was passionate about. And then I did that. And then I saw uh, something that was really fraught. Well, something that was wrong with the nonprofit industry is that like, it's not run like a business basically is there's a, a nonprofits that have a lot of overhead are skewered by media. Like um, they never get good PR. And um, mm -hmm. that is terrible because it basically means that like they don't pay good people, good money to do good work. And I saw a very, very low ceiling for a, like the impact I was going to ha be have because of the way that the nonprofit industry is structured. And then also just because, I was going to have to sacrifice like my own family's well-being um, to do work wow. that was meaningful. So I decided to move over to the private sector um, and did some business development work for a while and got some really amazing experiences. That's actually how I was exposed to Tony Robbins for the first time. My boss sent me. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> so I love Tony yeah. Robbins. Yeah. Yeah. Super, super cool. Uh, larger than life dude. Um, yeah. And also got pretty clear that like I was, I was working I was working a ton to help someone else build their dreams and didn't really know what my dreams were and kind of act, like Ooh. actually reached like a pretty intense crucible in my life where I realized I'd built a life that looked great on paper, but was, I was feeling all kinds of empty inside, uh, which set in motion what some people like to call Saturn returns. Um, I like to call it a forest fire year. Like when you're, you've built something that's so incongruent with your soul that your soul's like, yeah, we're just going to level the playing field so that there's room for new growth. Um, mm. And so that's, that's what my 2016 was, was a, a whole lot of exiting things that were not nourishing me at the deepest level. Um, and yeah, got super depressed, was abusing alcohol, uh, left relationships, left jobs, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> Did a little, yeah, yeah, you know, like just cleaned house. Um, and then uh, came out of it. That's a whole other story. But, um, and at the end of that year was when I decided that I wanted to impact other people's lives the way that the life coach that I'd worked with that year had helped me. And so that's, mm. that's where I moved into not just being like a participant in personal development, but being um, like a guide. And Yeah. Can you tell me a little bit more about what that moment was? The moment for you that was like, oh, sh like, I, I can't do this anymore. Like, I have to make a change here. Yeah. I mean, I, it, sometimes it's like hard to talk about because the people that were like the, like the person I worked for was like a really amazing person. And the person yeah. that I was dating was a good man. Um, like the job, it was a good job, right? Like it wasn't yeah. none of, it wasn't, I, I don't think I, I didn't, hadn't put myself into like a terrible situation, but yeah. I, I was just super, I mean, I remember like, I remember having a moment where I imagined my life 10 years in the future and like having two kids and just like crying, folding laundry. Yeah. And being like, holy shit, I'm sending myself down a road towards being a shell of a human. Yeah. Um, well, you're right. I feel like that's such a like valuable lesson for people watching. And like those on replay, like hit hashtag replay so that we can like come back and talk about this. But I feel like that's such a valuable thing for people today because I think a lot of us do live like kind of okay lives and like we kind of have the picket fence and we kind of are happy and we like have good people around us but like but there's something so much deeper than that that's that's missing yeah and i'd love yeah yeah even more of your like yeah dude pretty good is actually super shitty yeah. like stuff's pretty good like nobody well i mean i don't know like maybe some people want pretty good and like if that's the case like fucking power to you, you know, but almost everyone I talk to and like, I'm sure yeah. that you experience this as well in your work, but like, when you start to look under the hood, like people want juicy, epic, like s breathtaking lives. That's what they want. And if, yeah, but like we come up with all of these coping mechanisms, you know, for like 
yeah, like, this is why settling for pretty good is okay. And so, like, pretty good's actually super shitty. <laughs> yeah. When it right. comes to, when it comes to, like, if you want to live a life that's catalyzed and informed by your soul. Yeah. Ooh, catalyzed and informed by your soul. Tell me more about that. Well, I, so I was, I started trying to write a book. I started writing a book, whatever. We'll see how long it takes me to write it. But like one of the, one of the, you know, like one of those sort of like divine moments of inspiration I like wrote down was uh, your soul's will for you is what you imagine is possible in the privacy of your own heart. Oof. And like, I don't know, you probably also experienced this, right? It's like every call I have with people uh, when I ask them to dream, they give me a really like, they think the menu, like they, they, they like go into their little menu of what might be possible. And then they tell me what that is. And then I'm like, okay, cool. So that was lame. <laughs> Here's a magic yeah. wand. Like, what do you really want? And every single vision is unique to that person. Mm -hmm. And it's not, yeah. it's not the life I want. It's not the person that was on my last call that what they want. It's not the person on the next call, what they want. Like each one of us has such a unique vision. And like, if you don't bring it into being, like it doesn't get to, Hi, Joshua David Hayward. <laughs> Good to say Joshua David Hayward. I love Hayward. this live thing. It's so cool. Um, it's the worst live right now. Yeah. Yeah. This is like my first thing. So. Yeah. I love it. Good. Yeah. Okay, keep going. It's so good. So that's what I mean by a life that's catalyzed and informed by our souls. Is like letting your soul play co-pilot. And David Mailer's, I love, like one time he was like, the soul does not negotiate. And I was like, Bah! you know it's like oh my god that's so true like the only piece of you that negotiates is your mind and your mind is also where like your fears and doubts and hesitations and like weird contradictory theories live so anyway i'm all about power of the soul that's so good Theo. and i feel like there's so much to be said about this so you and i before we jumped on this talked a little bit about the and or life, the and, the and life and the or, the, the or life. And I feel like that so many just ands. There's so the much to that. It. I feel like so many of us live this settled life of just like, oh, I guess I have either this or that. And it just sucks. And it's super subtly and it's horrible. And I want to hear more about and or life differences. Yeah. So, I mean, like the easy way is like getting to have it all, which is a little bit buzzy right um but i i i just found that like once i embrace the idea of like what if expand what if i choose that expansion gets to be infinite like what does life look like if it is always ah. expanding like where will i be in five years well where will i be in 10 years like it allowed me to access i think a creative part of my imagination or like a creative part of like the way that i show up that um, that like is at a different level of sophistication than the way that I used to. And so one yeah. of those things is like, okay, what if it's and? So uh, if I'm feeling like it's a, it's a decision between this or that, <laughs> thanks, Stacy. If I feel like it's a decision between this or that, if I refuse to let that be the answer, like I get to start asking myself, like, what am I not seeing yet? What am I not thinking mm -hmm. of? Um, if I want how do I, if I want, and how do I, how, like, if that's the only option that's available to me, then what is, what are those options? And then all of a sudden, like multiple options come through. Yeah. So good. No, I love that. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, that so makes cool. sense. That's so good, Theora. Yeah, I love that. I feel like there's such a, like, magician with words and I just love the way that you wo wove that together and that's so so abundantly just true and I think you're right I think uh, we really limit ourselves with the or question and it just takes away all of our options so that's so good I think it yeah like amputates us from our creativity because we're only seeing two categories right so if it's like well if that's not possible there has to be a third option and if there's a third option then there gets to be a fourth a fifth a sixth a seventh yeah well, and what's possible then, right? It's like, yeah, man, literally anything. Infinite. That's so good. 
That's so good. I love it. Cool. Yeah. Well, tell me more to tell me more about like the work that you're doing with your clients now. Like, tell me more about like the peeps that you're talking to and having conversations with and like who, like, are you typically talking to entrepreneurs? Are you talking to real estate agents? Like talking to nine to fivers? Like what's your, who, who are the people that like are curious to hear more about your work and like, and that you feel like super juiced to talk to more? Yeah, um, I, I seem to be a magnet for entrepreneurs, which is like great, which is like not bad at all. Um, uh, I definitely love the entrepreneurial mindset because uh, they kind of come pre-programmed with a like, how do I make this happen software, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so it's a yeah. little bit, there's, a, there's less sort of uh, like psychological onboarding, if you will, um, with entrepreneurs. Um, so I, I definitely say like that is 90% of the people that um, I work with. Um, and I'm like super happy about that. Um, what was the rest of the question? Just like, do they shop at Whole Foods? Like, <laughs> no, but like, no, but like, who is, who is the human that like, you're typically having these conversations with? Like, is it mostly men? Is it mostly women? Is it like, yeah, like, I'm so curious, because obviously, I'm sure that they're like, right now, if you're not super attracted to what Theora is doing, and the conversations that are going through her mind, and even her level of confidence, and like, all the things like, first off, you're crazy. But I'm just more trying to weed out, like, who are the people that can even like, approach you to talk about, like, working with you and having more like, in depth work, because I know, like, you're doing retreats and stuff. So I'm just trying to figure out, like, who would even, who's even like, fit to have a conversation with you right now? Yeah. Totally. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's helpful. Um, I definitely am working with people that are at a higher level of commitment with regards to the like way they want to show up in the world and that kind of impact they want to have. So uh, like people that want to become the version of themselves that's revolutionary with regards to the way they think and believe and show up. So um, I, I talked to a, I mean, in the same community that we're connected, right? Is that I talk to a lot of people who um, find themselves oftentimes at sort of like the, the growth edge of their community. So the thought leaders and the sort of spiritual vanguards um, mm -hmm. of who they're around and they're the ones leading the charge and like inviting people to ascend with them. And um, I'm really interested in getting those people together, getting those people into an intimate community where we get to like pitch and catch leadership with one another um, yeah. and are people that are already like already have plenty of per or enough personal development under their belt that they're like, okay, cool. Let's come together in this hub. Let's blow each other's minds apart and then go back to our respective communities and start to create those ripple effects. Cause like, fuck it, dude. Like let's change world culture. <laughs> like, let's just do it already. You know, like we're absolutely capable of it. Like we're brilliant enough. We have the ingenuity. We have the networks. Um, and like it starts with the way that we lead and it starts with like the way that we invite people in um and uh and like i've just found too that like as i have not made decisions for other people i've been super surprised i've been very pleasantly surprised with like who gravitate toward who who's gravitating towards my own journey of upward mm -hmm. of vertical develop of evolution whatever it's called self-actualization right is like when we have an open door policy and we let people like ride our coattails like it just means that like there's more people along for the ride um so i'm really i'm very much interested in people that like want to have an impact want to create legacy and like very like whenever and like that like revolutionaries at heart like when they hear when people like i love it when people are like well you just like have to like put in your two years and i'm always like but what if you don't like anytime there's a status quo, like when it's like, well, you know, like you just don't make money in your business in the first year. And I'm like, but what if you did, you know, like any status quo, like I want to get in there and bust it up. I just don't, it's, it's, they're just recycled stories that need upgrading and they need more creativity. So those are the kind of people who like Super. think like that. I like to call them sacred rebels. Yeah. I want those people. Sacred rebels. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like we talked briefly about it, but this, like the sacrificial energy living. Yeah. And sacrificial energy. Yeah. That, that like, that loops back a little bit to the and versus or, um, 
and instead yeah. of or um, is I, I hear very often because I work with entrepreneurs, right, is like, well, like, um, I'm doing this like for my family. So I have to not spend as much time with them in order to build this business, you know, or, or like, it's like health, health is something that gets sacrificed or like the intimacy of relationships or caliber of community. Um, and, and people don't even realize that they're putting themselves that they're, or like, I've even heard in relationships, there's like, well, you have to make sacrifices. Right. And yet, like I've worked with a few cu couples where, there's a way to work around it where like there is no sacrifice, like compromise becomes like an act of devotion and service. And it's not something that you resent doing because you're not in that transactional space of like, well, I do this for that. Right. And so again, like when I come up, when I come into the face of sacrificial energy, I think it's harmful to whoever's quote doing the sacrificing usually because they're placing themselves in like a martyrdom category, but also to the people that you're sacrificing for. I see it a lot with parents doing it for children. And I actually, it's like a huge burden and responsibility to put on kids to like sacrifice your own happiness or like your own thriving for your children. Not only because like they pick up on that shit, but also because you're teaching them that that's what they're supposed to do when they grow up because kids do what we do. They don't do what we say. Yes. And so like, I have yet to see an, a, an and I, of course I'm taught, this is like, you know, I mean, I, I haven't like gone and practiced this in like an impoverished community, right? So like, I don't know like necessarily like what ecosystems this holds up under, but with regards to the people that I'm working with, which is let's be honest, like all first world clientele uh, is like, there's no space for you to be sacrificing. And I, I would venture that like second world, like maybe that's also true. I don't know, I haven't like tested it out yet, but. Um, I have yet to meet someone with who has a story about sacrificing for the good of someone else or something bigger where like it actually holds up under my scrutiny. <laughs> so good. Thera, you're the best. Thera, how do people like you just have such an infectious energy and I just freaking love your teaching. Like, like how do we contact you? Cause like guys at this point, if you're not super sold on like, I, I don't care what the hell she's doing. I need it like like message her at the very least but like what's an easy way for people to get a hold of you Thora, and like play more with you yeah just email me directly so um I, i'm like a little of course i'm like doing a total relaunch because like my old okay i'm gonna tell you my email and then i'm gonna tell you why i don't want people to go to my website <laughs> yet <laughs> so my email is theora at theoramench.com t-h-e-o-r-a M-O-E-N-C-H. So just email me directly. You can uh, rewind that if you hear it again. What? I said you can rewind it if you need to hear it again. Oh, yeah. For those walk. Um, and like, wait, give me one week and a half on my website because um, as you know, in marketing, like there, there's a lot of exploration I've done. There was a while when I was like concentrating mostly on intimacy because I work a lot in like alpha, omega, masculine, feminine energetics. Um, and so I was like really passionate about that for a while. And, and so like my, it's so funny, like my website has like followed my journey through like where, as I've discovered my own identity as like a guide and a coach. Um, yeah. but like where I'm headed now is not right now. All the branding is like rewild your heart, um, which is all like beautiful stuff about like getting back to like, like what is like the primal nature of your dreams. Um, but like now the, the two, the programs I'm, I'm launching now our full throttle living, which is like a fucking yeah yeah launch your life boot camp, and then the other is the Rebel Rising Incubator, and that's that community I was talking about where we'll be running all over the world, going to South Africa next year. Um, but like yeah, bring, Why? bringing our brains and souls and and hearts together to do epic shit. Rebel so, Rising. Um, yeah. Guys, Rebel Rising. Like those of you who feel like you have even an ounce of rebel in you freaking contact this girl and go to freaking south africa yeah Jeez. like if you get off this damn facebook live message her right now shoot her an email which is adorable i still love to use email and guys freaking make this shit happen go oh my gosh south what africa. should i do instead of email facebook messenger oh my god guys contact me in facebook messenger i'm cool i'm hip <laughs> yeah she's hip with she's hip to the hot portland it's cool um great Thera, you're lovely oh no yeah so much. become my friends you guys should friend me for sure i'm always loving but just like tell me who you are be like i saw you on that thing 
Because I don't, because I have like, I don't even know how many, like, you know, like people from Bangladesh and stuff. I'm like, but I don't know you. What you doing? Who are you at? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I love that. Thera, words just don't even, they don't even come to me because that's your thing. Um, thank you. And I appreciate you. And guys, go check her out. And Theora, have a lovely rest of your day. And let's do more of this. Cool. I'm into it. Cool. Love you, brother. Cool. Love you lots. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. Now, like, get out. <laughs> I got you. <laughs>